if you're learning how to lead, you only pick one behavior or one rule per week and you focus on that. And you just, you're learning how to lead. If you were to try and pick all 20, it wouldn't work. Just would, it would crash and burn. Um, Two-year-old hits his family when angry. Help. I do have a course on toddlers who hit, bite, etc. But basically they're about consistent corrective actions. None of these mini therapy sessions that everyone wants to talk about big feelings and big emotions. I know it's trendy, but it's garbage. That is for the, that's to feed the mom. It has nothing to do with the toddler. So every time they hit, you say no, and you just push them away to let them know. Like you take their, if they've hit, you say no. And then you just go off and do your own thing. Like you don't run away from them, but you just go on about as if you're just going on like that meant nothing to you kind of thing. You just corrected them and then you're just do it, going about your business. Watch them like a hawk though. If they come at you again, prevent the next hit. Say no, and then just hold them for a few seconds or whatever, but you don't talk to them. Okay, it's these therapy sessions that are just making everything tank. It frustrates the heck out of me. It makes you look weak. And they're not listening, they're watching. So if they see this, and then you just look away while you're holding them, that's way more powerful than, you know you shouldn't do that. You, just, you know you're a good little boy. That's all garbage. That's why they keep hitting, because you're going to keep talking to them. You see? They know that they're going to get, the th they're happy to be told off even during a therapy session rather than being ignored. You see what I mean? Like it's, you're feeding it. You're winning. They're winning. I mean, they, and they know it. Uh, what do you use as a consequence? I remove the situation, but it doesn't always work. Well, okay. Well, check out my behavior board. That explains how you set rules and consequences. It's very organized, very simple. And um, it shows you how to start doing this. Like if kids are doing 20 things wrong in a day, I deal with 20 things wrong they're doing in a day because I'm level 10 with what I teach because I know how to lead. But if you're, if you're learning how to lead, you only pick one behavior or one rule per week and you focus on that and you just, you're learning how to lead. If you were to try and pick all 20, it wouldn't work. Just would, it would you'd crash and burn. Um, whereas I know how to bundle stuff up and how to, you know, work with it all, how to organize it all. But it, you start with one rule per week. As a single mom from the beginning, I have a very hard time telling my boys, no, they are seven and five. I see I have to be harder on them. Do you have any tips? Check out my, uh, my boot camp course is the best thing for you, potentially. It just teaches you how to be a leader. And then you said, I have a very hard time telling my boys, no. Boy, oh boy, they got to learn how to hear the word no, you know, or else they're going to be out there committing crimes or, you know, you know what I mean? Like they got to learn that they can't do everything they want. Um, that's a life skill. If you don't teach that to them, they're going to be a handful. So yeah, check out my boot camp course. That's three to 12 years old. Uh, so you're at a really good age for that. Um, or at the, at the very least, check out the behavior board. That's completely free. I've fallen short in the leadership department and now have a 13 year old. What should my approach be? Well, okay. Uh, I don't have a course on teenagers yet, <clears throat> but that's coaching. If you want my one-on-one -on -one help with that. Um, it's just about strengthening your bond, strengthening your friendship with your teenager. Um, but it's a, you know, you got, it's a bit of a dance too, because you want to let them, you know, spread their wings. So these are my top three tips for parenting teenagers. You listen to understand and show empathy. You don't listen to gather information to lecture with. If they want your advice, they're going to ask for it. By the way, they already know it. Number two is you negotiate pretty much everything. You say something like this. Hey, I want your dirty clothes in the hamper from now on. What do you want from me? Negotiate it. Not everything, but a lot of stuff. Um, and then number three is don't sweat the small stuff. If you try and micromanage a teenager, good luck with that. Save your energy for the big stuff if you even have it. So yeah, do not try and micromanage. If they do something stupid, this is what I would have said. If they did something stupid, I'd say, well, that was stupid. Wait till you hear what I did when I was your age. Like, it's okay. We all, we all mess up. Life's messy. So yeah, when, you, when you're good at dealing with teenagers, they're the best because they're so freaking smart. They're just so, and... They have this huge brain power, but they're fresh and they're open to new ideas. Like they're just amazing. And their brains, like I'm 63 years old. My brain's turned into mush. I can just feel it. I'm not as quick as I used to be, um, for sure. And, uh, but yeah, when they're young, they are quick, especially fast. And, um, and plus they don't tend to be as opinionated when they know that it's okay not to be. Like you say, yeah, you can change your mind tomorrow. I want you to try everything, go out there, try stuff. But yeah, you can change your mind tomorrow. Like it's okay to go to change your mind about stuff too. So allow them to make mistakes and learn from them and then laugh it off with them and tell them the dumb things you did. So it's okay. That's how we learn. We make mistakes. That's how we learn. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. 
I, I encourage it because that's how we learn, right? The road to success is paved with failure. If you're not failing, you're not learning because you're only playing it safe and only doing what you're good at. Well, what a sad life is that, eh? Don't you want to go out there and learn and fail and learn and open new horizons all the time? I'll always have this. I'm very curious. Like I'm very, I'm always open to new stuff, meeting new people. Like I always, I always want to grow. Like to me, I'm, I'm dying if I'm not growing. So I always want to sort of, you know, I have my things I'm set in my ways, but I'm always searching out different ideas and find that fascinating.